Hello, my name is Ryan Warren and I'm a member of the technical team working on the Fixity project. Today I would like to give a brief introduction into some of the potential ways in which an automated program repair tool can be triggered and how they may be integrated into the software development lifecycle. There are many possible approaches that could be used to trigger an APR tool and each of these will have their own set of benefits and limitations. The triggers that I would like to focus on today are standalone tools, IDE plugins, continuous integration pipelines, version control system hooks, and issue tracking systems. A standalone tool or service could comprise of an application that is either accessed by a developer locally on their machine or via a web service interface. In this scenario, the tools would be triggered at the discretion of a developer. A tool that adopts a strategy could be beneficial for developers that have little hands-on experience with APR and want to trial and evaluate the benefits of these tools before fully adopting APR into their development lifecycle. It could also be a preferred alternative to developers who wish to periodically check whether their code base contains any issues, for example, in personal or passion projects. However, a drawback to this style is the requirement for developers to actively remember to engage with the tool manually this could lead to potential issues remaining undetected for long periods of time, which could be detrimental to the effectiveness of the APR tool as a whole, which, could, which it could have otherwise provided. As many development teams make use of some continuous integration system, such as TeamCity or Jenkins, this tooling option may be their desired preference. In this setting, the tool could be situated after the testing phase, triggering when any or a specified subset of unit tests that were deemed critical to pass fail. Further, an intelligently de designed tool will then be able to focus its attention to any suspicious code that was introduced in the latest commits that was also involved in these failing tests. One clear limitation to this approach arises when the coverage provided by the test suite is insufficient. However, this can largely be mitigated by enabling developers to either forcibly include the APR tool as a separate phase in the CI pipeline that will run irrespective of unit test failures, or as a separate scheduled phase that is included in specific builds, such as overnight builds, which can afford the additional time that running these APR tools introduces. APR tools that are designed as IDE plugins can be separated into two main categories, those which require some manual developer interaction and those which continually run as background tasks. A manual plugin requires the developer to actively initiate the tool, whether by interacting with the tool window provided by the plugin or as a goal embedded in their local build process, much like toggling test inclusion in builds. A drawback to manual plugins is the reliance on developer initiation, which, if a large volume of change has occurred between triggers, could drastically increase the time the tool takes to execute. A background plugin would actively check for issues in real time and can be optimized such that it only concerns itself with changes the developer has introduced. One limitation to background tasks could be the additional resource consumed by allowing the tool to be run continuously, which could be problematic if hardware limitations exist. However, this again can be largely mitigated by allowing developers to configure the tool to only trigger once certain criteria have been met, for example, after the file has been saved, after n lines of code have been added, modified or deleted, or as a scheduled task that executes after a predetermined delay. Many version control systems provide hook-like functionality to execute some arbitrary task and can be either local or server-side. A hook could theoretically be configured to prevent the addition of faulty code into the main repository, requiring that all or some of the more concerning issues are resolved before progressing to the next stage. By using local hooks, the tool would need to be installed locally on every developer system and would trigger upon specific actions such as commit or push. The tool will then only need to check the changes that were introduced by the developer. A limitation to this approach could arise when developers don't regularly commit their changes. For example, in the situation where a developer commits their work at the end of the day, the tool may take some time to report whether their code contains any potential faults. If the tool is configured in such a way that it prevented faulty code from being committed or pushed, then the developer may be required to resolve these issues before they leave. This could lead to developers holding off committing their changes until the next day, which in turn could result in loss of work, as well as causing frustration amongst developers, as these potential faults were only revealed to them at the end. 
By using server-side hooks, the tool only needs to exist on the machine hosting the central copy of the repository. The tool can then be triggered when incoming commits are received. A drawback to this design is that it allows for potential faulty code to be sent to the central repository, as well as introducing additional workload for the central repository, which could create a bottleneck. Many developers also use an issue tracking system to handle book reporting, such as Jira and Bugzilla. Similar to VCS hooks, a tool using this approach could be configured to trigger when certain events, such as issues created, updated or closed, occur, and could be beneficial for more transient issues that may be difficult to accurately define and identify using unit tests alone. Further, a tool which monitors these platforms may be less invasive than the previously discussed approaches as it is independent from the build pipeline. When an issue is created, the tool will be triggered and it will attempt to fix the issue with the provided context. If the tool manages to successfully identify a fix, it can automatically update the issue with the suggested patch for review. However, if the tool is unsuccessful, it is still possible that the tool may be able to provide additional details to the issue that could assist the developers progressing with the issue. When an existing issue is updated with additional details, such as extra failing test cases or other linked issues, the tool can be triggered to re-attempt fixing the issue. Again, updating the issue with the produced outcome. Finally, when an existing issue is manually closed, the tool can be triggered to validate a patch proposed by a developer, evaluating whether this patch does resolve the issue, as well as determining whether the fix causes any new problems or vulnerabilities. A clear limitation for this approach is its susceptibility to human error. Therefore, it will be likely require a more structured report with a minimum level of detail before the tool will trigger, as any ambiguity could hinder the tool's ability to work effectively. So far, we've explored several possible triggers that can be used to activate APR tools. However, I would like to provide one final approach, a combination approach. With this, the tool could utilize the advantages provided by combining multiple triggers whilst mitigating some of the previously mentioned drawbacks. For example, if we take a tool that is both a plugin which runs in the background of a developer's IDE and a more in-depth tool which is integrated into the CI pipeline, then this configuration would allow developers to be presented with real-time feedback explaining the faultiness of their code, which in turn could help reduce introducing faulty code in the first place, as well as providing a more in-depth analysis of the project by considering how all these components interact when combined with one another in CI, which, if is computationally expensive, can be scheduled as part of an overnight build. To help illustrate how this could be implemented, Java programmers who use Maven as their build tool can include Maven plugins in both local builds and within Jenkins CI builds.